So Pete Terry, Jeremy Levier previewing the Division I boys basketball Final Four um, at UNH and Final Four that uh, going to be played a different day now because of uh, the accident with the uh, Spalding bus. They got to push it back, uh, but we got Merrimack versus Spalding in one semifinal, Trinity versus Central in the other semifinal. Looking like a pretty pretty good Final Four here. Who knows what's going to happen at UNH? Yeah, that's why they call it March Madness. I can't say that enough. Uh, the Spalding story, I think, is a big story. Uh, you know, the, the accident, of course, the other night, the postponement of the game, when are they going to play it? They find out this morning that they were playing tonight, or I don't know, yesterday, but they, they, they really had to come to grips with the fact that we have to move past this accident, we got to go play a basketball game, and hey, if we're going to do that, we might as well go out and win it, and now they're playing at UNH. I think it's a tremendous story. Yeah, and Spalding, you know, we just finished watching this uh, overtime game in, in the quarterfinals where they, where they beat, went on the road and beat Nashua North. A great game, went back and forth, a bunch of lead changes. Um, but uh, Spalding, team effort, you know, there's a bunch of guys and, you know, Dominic Parity just could not miss from the free throw line. Luke Roberts banks in a couple three-pointers, one of them that sends it to overtime. And Connor No, the kid from Spalding that was the one that was hospitalized um, in that accident um, on Friday night, he comes off the bench and scores 20 points. Just a great story, this Red Raiders team. Yeah, I mean, it's getting to be the look of a uh, team of destiny. When you have that type of stuff happens. I mean, you remember how they got to this game. Luke Roberts hitting a three at the buzzer to beat Manchester West. So, hey, and I talked to a couple different players after this game tonight, Parody, and then I talked to Connor No, and they both came out and said, we think that there might be a higher power watching over us right now. And, uh, and you look at the team they're going to be facing, Merrimack. How do, you, how do you break that game down? I mean, Merrimack, obviously a team playing some good basketball right now uh, with Dimitri Flores back in there, the Jandron brothers, Jared Peabody. They got a lot of talent. They got some size. They, they got speed. Um, but they're also a team that there's no question they can be beat. You know, I think all four of these teams can is capable of winning the championship. But look at that Spalding-Merrimack game. Um, Spalding, you know, they, they beat Merrimack during the regular season, so they're obviously capable of doing it, but that was without Dimitri Flores in the lineup. Yeah, he seems to be uh, returning quite nicely from that broken arm. It looked a little shaky the first time uh, he came back, and then he ended up getting hurt, hurting his ankle. They sat him out for the regular season finale, but I, I saw him uh, the other night against Dover, and he looks really good. The shot is not the same as it was before the injury, but the passes are still there. The defense is still there. And I think that team is, is a team that has a real good shot at winning the championship. But they're going to have to beat the team of destiny if they can get to the championship game. But I really like how that Merrimack team's playing right now. Yeah, you know, Merrimack, they got, they got size inside, um, you know, with, um, with Gianelli, with Tyler Peabody, um, Connor Whelan. They, they got a bunch of guys that can bang inside. But, you know, Spalding, they also got some size. We saw here, Parity and, and Evigens down low. You know, but, uh, you know, on the perimeter, I think Merrimack's going to look to run. And Spalding's going to look to slow it down, as we saw here in the National North game. North likes to run, and Spalding tried to slow it down. And Spalding, I thought, did a pretty good job. They had a few turnovers here and there against the press, but overall, I thought they did a pretty good job ball faking, moving the ball against the press, and, and um, being able to uh, be calm against the press. And I think Merrimack's going to press them, too. They're going to try to run as well. Yeah, I think that that's what you got to do. You want to up the pace a little bit. That could take Gianelli out of the game and kind of negate some of that size advantage because when you're running up and down the floor, He's not the fastest guy, and, and, and Tim Goodrich likes to kind of keep him on the bench, get somebody else in there. But that should be a very interesting game. Uh, you look at National North tonight, and Ryan Gothier did not play well at all. Didn't have a, a field goal until a three-pointer with about two minutes or so that gave him a five-point lead. I thought, all right, well, North's got this one in the bag, but a, a bad technical foul on Jake Mellon throwing down. I think it was no to the ground, and they teed him up, and that turned into, I think, a, a, a four or maybe a five-point possession, and they ended up tying it up on that, that crazy banker three by Roberts. But, uh, look, I, I like Merrimack. I mean, I like the other two teams that we haven't even talked about that are, that are going to play the late game on, on, on Tuesday. Trinity and Central, uh, Manchester um, City rivalry. Any Anytime, you know, it, it's Queen City teams going at it, it's, it's always a big deal. It's always a packed house, um, even though the, Man, the, city, the Queen City teams aren't going to be playing in Manchester. You know, it would be kind of nice if the game was being played at Snow um, in Manchester, but they're playing it at Durham, Trinity and Central, um, two very good basketball teams with a big rivalry going at it. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of traffic heading uh, east on 101 and then uh, 
banging that exit there, exit 7 uh, to Route 125 in Epping. There's going to be a lot of people. That McDonald's is going to be real busy over there over the course of the next couple of days. And uh, looking at that matchup, though, I mean, Central, they beat them in the regular season. Trinity, they only um, lost two games all season. Um, one of them was to Central, one of them was to Manchester West. And, you know, Trinity, they got the size. But Central, they, they got some big guys inside as well that can match up with those guys. They're not obviously as big as, that, as uh, Trinity inside. But, again, it's, it's going to be a matchup of tempo. Trinity, they want to slow it down, pound it into their big guys. Once the defense collapsed, kick it out to their shooters. In Central, they're going to look to press and run. And Central won one of those slow it down games. It was in the low 40s that Central won at Trinity a couple months ago. So they can win. Uh, the game that they won the other night against Memorial was a, uh, a low scoring affair. You know, look, that's going to be a great game. Anytime you get a city rivalry, and then when you bring it to UNH for a shot at, at a trip to the championship game, I mean, that's going to be crazy. The atmosphere is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I think that one is going to be another low scoring game. I mean, both Trinity and Central, you know, they seem to be better off better defensively than they are offensively you know so I, I look for another game in the 40s um, you know maybe maybe low 50s with Trinity and Central going at it um, obviously you know Trinity and, and Central they're not really one guy carries the load offensively it's not really one or two guys you have balanced scoring um, on, on both sides you know I don't think it's going to be one guy that carries it or, or one guy with 20 or 30 points it's going to be which team you know is able to execute down the stretch I think it's going to be a close game that goes down to the wire uh, I'll tell you one guy that I think is a huge key for Trinity and I think it's Memorial Gabriel uh, he everybody expected huge things out of him this year we didn't see it he had a good year don't get me wrong but it was not a great year the other night against Alvern in the quarterfinal, he had a great night, a double-double type of night, a dominating effort uh, both offensively and defensively and on the board. So to me, if he plays like that and gives Trinity that type of performance, they're the favorite to win this championship. But I would not say at this point with who we know is in the, in the, cha in the final four, I wouldn't call Trinity the favorite right now with the way people are playing right now. I don't know if there is a favorite. There probably isn't. I think it's very, very up in the air. Look, I think the teams with the best chance that, to win this thing are Merrimack uh, and, and then Trinity and Central. They all have an even chance of winning it, and that's no slight on Spalding. Look, this, that's a tremendous team, but I just think Merrimack is the most well-rounded team if you look at them top to bottom, what they have, I just think they're the, the most well-rounded team. And I think they've got three studs playing very, very well right now. Dimitri, Tyler, and Eric Gendron. Yeah, they'll be a tough team to beat. There's no question about it. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, Merrimack, um, you know, they, if they beat Spalding, you know, they're, they're going to win it. I mean, it's no guarantee. I think. Oh, no. I think they are, you know, maybe if there's a favorite, maybe it is them. But um, I, I wouldn't say... Yeah, I, I still haven't seen that seen them in a while with Dimitri in there. I know, you know, I'm sure they're a better team, obviously, with him in there. But there's still, I would think, to be an adjustment period, getting a star player back in the lineup. Now all of a sudden, the roles for everybody have changed. You know, they've been playing for so long with, you know, without him in there. So the Jenner brothers were the scorers, and they had to carry the load. But now Dimitri's back in there, so now they got to shift roles there all over the place. You know, you got to readjust. And they had a couple games they were able to win. Um, you know, in the playoffs against, you know, BG. They had, they were taken overtime by a BG team that had struggled quite a bit, and you know they struggled early on against Dover before turning on the second half, winning by 20. But now you know they, this is the team in Spalding, probably a better team than they've played. I don't know they, when the last time they they played a team this good um, is, and so you know I think Spalding has a chance of pulling off the upset there. Um, Trinity and Central, you know you mentioned Mabor Gabriel being a key player. Um, how about Gabriel Count for for Central? Um, you know he's another player going to the season. Some people said you know first team All State. You know he should be he should be right there. Uh, but there's been sometimes this season that you know the best player for Central has been Troy Pelletier. You know sometimes it's been um, Christian Artiga. You know sometimes I. J. Isaiah Joseph has stepped up, and you know it's probably a good thing to have that many guys that can be your best player. But um, I think you know if Gable Count can step up and and be the guy you know handling the basketball scoring the basketball, making plays that he can be. I know he, he, he got injured in the uh, Memorial game, but he is expected back in the lineup for the uh, semifinals. Is he? I had Doc Wheeler on my radio show on uh, WGIR and uh, 96.7 yesterday, and he said he wasn't sure. He said he had a stinger. He got injured in the first half of that game, did not return, and he told me he was unsure, but that was yesterday, so 36 Well, that, yeah, that, that, could, that, could take, that could be a huge impact if, if he's not able to go. Yeah, and Doc Wheeler was here tonight. I, I should have asked him. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to grab him. But, that, you know, if Gabe LeCount doesn't play in that game, 
that's a game changer. It really is. I don't know. I don't think that Central can beat Trinity without him. How about Ian Sestere, the freshman point guard for Trinity? Um, you know, he's, he's done a good job. He's had his ups and downs, you know, sometimes struggling when facing, the def when, when facing a press, you know, having some turnovers. But overall, you know, being able to make plays, get in the lane, make good passes and hit shots, he's done a good job. But he hasn't played on this, kind of, this big of a stage before. For a freshman point guard playing at UNH on that big a stage, I mean, a lot of people say Trinity's the favorite, but... You know, especially Central, the way they pressure the basketball defensively, um, or you know, the championship. You know, Merrimack, Spalding, these teams are juniors and seniors on these teams. Uh, whereas you, you know, Trinity, they got so stare at point guard, a freshman, and they got two sophomores out there with Gene Petruzzi and uh, and Pat Keefe on, in the backcourt as well. A lot of inexperience on the Trinity team. Yeah, they're young, uh, but I think Carmen Gio Petruzzi did pretty good last year uh, in a big spot as a freshman himself. Uh, he it's... wasn't asked to, car to carry the no, be a point guard for 32 minutes. No, he I... came in there for 10, 15 minutes, hit a couple good shots. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he, he showed that he could handle the pressure. As far as Sestera is concerned, he's very, very good. I remember not too long ago, five, six years ago maybe, there was a freshman freshman uh, point guard for Trinity by the name of Jordan Laguerre, who did pretty well. Uh, I'm not saying that's just comparing to stare to him. Oh boy, uh, just comparing. <laughs> Let's the slow down. I'm comparing the situation. I'm not comparing yeah. the players. Uh, but look, I think it's it's going to be fun, especially with a little bit of a bigger floor. See how they can spread out that size a little bit and use those guys that can handle the ball and shoot like Keith and GM Petruzzi and to stare. Yeah, you know, you talk about Sestere for Trinity, and, you know, Dawson Dixon is also, you know, he's only a sophomore, inexperienced. You know, he didn't get a lot of playing time last year at Trinity for a transfer to go to Central. You know, so you got a couple of inexperienced point guards in there for Trinity and Central um, where, you know, Merrimack, Spalding, they, they haven't played on that big court at UNH, Trinity and Central have. Do you think that's going to have a have an impact when you get to the championship? Whoever wins that Trinity Central game, they were there already. Merrimack, Spalding, um, they, neither team even made the semifinals, uh, even made the uh, quarterfinals last year. Yeah, well, think about that. That's kind of crazy when you think how long Dimitri Flores has been playing and, and Tyler Jenner, but especially Flores. I know he's only a junior, but... He's never played at Lon Home Gym before, and he's probably thinking about that himself. I don't think he's going to shrink under the, the bright lights. Uh, I, I just think that once the game begins, that stuff kind of goes away, the inexperience. It may show up again at the end of the game when you're on the free throw line you got to sink a big shot with the place going crazy, but I think that when you're in the flow of the game, you're not thinking about that stuff. And, you know, Spalding, they did pretty good against uh, defending Ryan Gothier here in the quarterfinals. You know, um, so you would think it would be the same strategy going up against Dimitri Flores, a playmaking point guard who likes to score, dish the ball off. Um, for the most part, it was Luke Roberts. They sometimes had Connor No, sometimes they had P.J. Juno um, on Ryan Gothier here today in the quarterfinals. You know, you'd think they're going to do the same thing against Dimitri to try to slow him down. Yeah, I would think so. But I think the difference between Dimitri and Ryan is, uh, Dimitri doesn't take as many outside shots. I mean, Gothier takes some deep shots, and a lot of times he hits them. I mean, I've seen him play a number of times this year, and he hits those downtown bombs. But I don't think Dimitri does that, especially coming off the broken arm. He's been playing with the, the wrap on his right wrist. That's his shooting wrist. So he's been reluctant, I think. He's been more of a pass-first point guard and a drive-more point guard. And you don't see that as much from Ryan Gothier. I think that's, what, that's the, uh, the, the difference between those two guys. So Merrimack and Spalding in one semifinal, um, Trinity and um, Central in the other semifinal. Division two, you have an 11 seed making it to the semifinals. You know, um, so you have some lower seeds in, in some of these divisions, but um, you know, you had a six seed in Spalding. But I don't really consider them a six seed. You know, it's not like oh my god, a six seed make it because they actually were in a, a three way tie. They could have been the number four seed. Correct. You know, so I don't think it's really a shock at all that Spalding made it this far during the regular season. That they beat Merrimack, they beat Central, they beat some good teams. Um, so really, no no surprise. I mean, throughout the course of the season, when you look at this back at this Division One season, all season long, there were, you had seven or eight, you know, even nine or ten teams that were all in that upper tier where you know any one of them could have made it made a run to the final four so you have four of those 10 or 11 teams that have made it so I'm not I don't think it's a surprise that any of these teams are here they're all good teams that all have a shot at winning this thing and by you saying that Spalding could have been a four seed if not for a tie break they were a four seed they don't get in that bus accident and we're not hearing this karma talk I think it's weird about Spalding everybody is talking about them as a Cinderella team but as we just said they were almost a four seed, so how can that team... And they're a higher seed than Merrimack. Merrimack's a seven seed. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's more the, the story behind what happened to them 
is why it seems like they're the underdog and they, they're playing with a little bit of an underdog chip on their shoulder and I think that w it's working for them. Well, I think they are the underdog against Merrimack because even though Merrimack's the seventh seed, you know, I think everybody would say that if Dimitri was healthy all year, they would have been a three or a two or a one or, you know, somewhere in that top four um, seed. So, you know, they... they probably are the underdog and I think Trinity might be a slight favorite over Central but there's no question you got two very good games on Tuesday night yeah I mean it's great it's weird that you know the game was supposed to be Monday night but that gives us another day because it's a day to rest up I'm sure you could use a rest you've been all over the place over the last couple yeah. of weeks yeah I'll, I'll, have a, I'll actually have a night off tomorrow night and my my marriage could use it too because my wife and kids they're wondering where daddy's been for the last couple of weeks yeah yeah well that's good hold to yeah, have week, some guys. time hold off. on one more week at the end of basketball season things things slow down which is nice. Well, for predictions, I don't know. Merrimack, Spalding, I think it's going to be a great game. I think Spalding, I like the way they play as a team. They don't rely on one guy. I think sometimes for Merrimack, they kind of go one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes Dimitri will, will try to go one-on-one -on -one or one of the Jenner brothers. So when, when Merrimack plays as a team, and they move the ball well, they, they run, and they really pressure the basketball. They're very tough to beat. I think Spalding, they're going to win by one point. It's going to be a great game. Um, and then Trinity Central, Another great game. I think on, on that on a big court, um, I think Central, if they can spread out those big guys and, and um, you know, if they can shoot the ball well, I know they've had some problems offensively. A lot of their games have been in the, in the 40s and in high 30s. If they can get going, get some points on the board, I think they can pull an upset over Trinity. Wow, you just uh, upped your amount of uh, readership in, in the Rochester area with that prediction. I like Merrimack in that game. I just think they're playing very, very well. And I'm going to pick Central. I'm going to pick Central to beat Trinity. I haven't seen Trinity in like a month and a half. I, I went if, to, if the count doesn't play, though, I mean, well, then, then yeah. I, I would probably go with Trinity. Right, but, but I, I'm going to pick Central. I just feel like they're playing really, really well. They just have so many different good players. It's not that Trinity doesn't, but I just got a feeling about Central for whatever reason. We'll see how works out all right so that's our final four preview pete terry and jeremy levy on the new hampshire notebook nhnotebook.com should be a great final four on tuesday night at unh